Welcome to Cushion K Fabe, ladies and gentlemen. It's time to talk about some wrestling. Got a lot of stuff going on this week, whether it be SmackDown, Rampage, Monday Night Raw. We had the NXT AEW War on Tuesday. We'll talk about that. Uh, we had, unfortunately, an injury to Hangman Adam Page. On that uh, Dynamite episode, we'll chit-chat about that a little bit. Bray Wyatt, MJF, Brock Lesnar, Bobby Lashley. Hell, we might even get Braun Strowman and Omos in. We got some stuff going on here to talk about, so let's get to it. All right, so let's start off with the most notable story going on right now, which is the injury to Hangman Adam Page, former AEW World Champion. He was competing against John Moxley, the current AEW World Champion, in a world title match on Tuesday on Dynamite. Now, we all know Moxley works pretty stiff. He's real physical. Hangman gets his shit into the AEW style is real, you know, strong style type of stuff. They 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 like to lay their stuff in. They like to, you know, give it their all in the ring, which is hey, they get it has its positives, but sometimes as we see, you know, safety has to be the priority. So what we saw was, um. John Moxley comes in for a real strong lariat. It's a Moxley lariat clothesline, whatever you want to call it. So you know it's going to be stiff. You know it's going to be strong. But this one was... I don't know if Hangman got knocked out on the clothesline. Or if he... Because he sold it to where he flipped and he landed the way he landed. He landed head first. So I don't know if the clothesline is what caused the concussion or if it was the way he landed. Or the combination of the two. So, you know, either way, it's very unfortunate. So we wish him the best speedy recovery. I am a Hangman Adam Page fan. I don't like the way they have booked him. That's a different story for the different, you know, different time. But so I am hoping he pulls out because he's he's one of my favorite AEW performers. So and that's just, you know, we, we could go into a whole different. Well, hell, we might as well go there. So, here's my issue. And this issue has been pointed out by the likes of many a people, notable people, regular fans, everybody. And this is going to ruffle some feathers. The AEW style and their reliance on spots and over over the top violence to kind of push the point home works at a detriment in situations like this. This is why you got so many people hurt. So many people on injury right now. So many people that, you know, Let's let's go back to Julia Hart. The table spot was not necessary. But because they just have to do the danger spots. It's fucking spot fest. That girl almost lost her fucking head. Like this is it's a now, get it. Injuries happen. It's sports. It's wrestling. Injuries happen in basketball, football, soccer, baseball. They, they happen in WWE. They're going to happen in eight. That's fine. But if we are doing things that increase the frequency and increase the level of danger that's already present in professional wrestling, we're not doing a service to the, re- to the performers. We are not protecting the performers. And sometimes they have to be protected from themselves. And I know that's unpopular, but somebody has to be the leader. Somebody has to say, no, you don't need to do that table spot. No, you don't have to lay in 
all of your shit as hard to get the point across. No, you don't have to bleed in every fucking match to get the point across. You can have a good wrestling match without doing that shit. Now, once you start doing that shit all the time, it loses its value. It becomes a normal part of the show to where now you have to dip up the stakes even more to get a reaction. And that's the problem they're running into. Now, that's not saying that this is necessarily what happened with Hangman, obviously. But just the culture overall leads to that type of stuff. All right, so, man, we got to protect the performers. We got we have to protect them. Sometimes they have to be protected from themselves. I know that may not be the most popular thing to say because we want to see... Look, I, I like seeing people go through tables just as much as the next person. I like seeing people do fucking moonsaults off ladders just like the next person. But sometimes it has to be done in a situation in which it means something. It has doesn't have to be done in every single match. You can bleed, but you don't have to do it in every match. Right? So let's let's just let's calm down. All right. Hopefully, Hangman gets better. You know, and I that I figured that that match would have been. It was already getting good. The match was already starting to get good, but I imagine it probably would have got a lot better and had a different finish. So that's unfortunate. Now, what we did see is we did see MJF come out after that. I'm going to go on record and saying that MJF is the hottest thing in professional wrestling right now. He's the hottest guy. The hottest individual guy right now. That dude is on fire. The promo he had with Regal earlier in that program where he told the story of how he had his tryout with WWE and Regal took him under his wing, but then he told him he was too young and then he kind of killed his dreams and that's what fire that fired him up and it, it brought out the devil in him and all this and then Regal's reply to him well if you want to be the devil then you got to show me quit taking shortcuts and earn it, it, it <sighs> that shit was good MJF is good now I'm telling y'all because we all know how Tony Khan likes the book unfortunately They're supposed to have MJF cash in against Moxley at full gear. Upcoming pay-per-view. What do you think they do? Because you don't. After the year Moxley has had. Cause you, can you really beat him clean in the middle of the ring with MJF? Like He, he deserves a little more than that, I think. But can you have MJF lose and kill the momentum? No. Which brings me to a point. What if the CM Punk, Young Bucks, Kenny Omega thing has been cleared up in the background and we just haven't heard about it? They finally cooled their heads off and said, you know what? Fuck it. We don't have to like each other, but we can work together. What if Punk shows up, causes some type of distraction or interference of some kind on some old WWE ending type shit, events ending basically, where Punk returns and fucks over MJF or Moxley, who, who, we don't, who knows, in some way, and you know makes his return. That shit would be huge. That would be probably the best outcome. I think that's that's the best way they that's the best thing they could do. Have Punk return during the Moxley MJF match. Fucking place is gonna explode. And then whatever shenanigans and finishes you have, then now you've got an out for Moxley if he does lose, because Punk interfered, or you got an out for MJF, you know, something like that. Something along those lines. But I can't see I can't see Moxley being beat clean in the middle of the ring by MJF after the year he's had. I'm sure he wants to put MJF over, but I don't know if they're going to do it like that. Can't just do it like that. 
So we shall see. Hmm. Now, let's talk about Bray Wyatt. We'll go over to a WWE. So Friday on SmackDown. Had a very emotional, very good, very touching promo from Bray Wyatt. He told his story about how basically after he was let go by WWE, after he was fired by Vince, how he lost, you know, he started, he lost family, he lost friends, lost his confidence, lost his desire and his drive. He thought that everything he had done in WWE was just like, uh, thanks, but see you later. And the fans kept him going. The fans are what made him want to come back. The fans kept him alive. He actually said, you guys saved my life. You know, he got huge reaction. Thank you. Thank you, Bray Chance. Welcome back, Chance. I mean, the crowd was hot for it. And then he gets cut off. And this fucking mask thing pops up on the screen. And we get the, the message. You don't you have no idea who I am. And blah, 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 blah. so I feel like we are leading in a direction in which Bray may not necessarily have a faction. Like everybody's everybody was pretty much sold that Bray's gonna have a faction. He's gonna have six people in costumes and they're gonna be it looks like it could be one of those internal struggle type of storyline type things where he's battling the demons inside himself as opposed to necessarily battling an individual person, a different person. That I mean we that that's what I took from that. You know, effectively trying to pull him back over to that dark side type of thing. That's what I gather from that. Cause they cut him off right in the middle of, you know, right in the middle of his promo and then put that shit up on the screen and it was kind of weird and you know. So I don't know. It's interesting. It's interesting to see where they're going to go with this. They got buzz. They got a lot of people talking. You know, if nothing else, people are going to tune in to see what's going on. So they can, and they can probably milk this shit. You know, and if they do build a faction, he does, you know, put together a new Wyatt family, so to speak. Then, hey, there we go. That's even cooler. We'll see. We'll see. We got SmackDown coming on tonight. This is Friday when we're recording this, so. We got SmackDown coming up tonight. I'm sure we will see more of Bray and whatever they got going on. We shall see. All right. So, what else we got going on WWE? We got Braun Strowman and the almost. Almost. I'm ready for that. You ready for that? They finally I'm a big guy against I a big guy. I think this might actually, this might actually be halfway decent. Now, I have been a critic of Omos on this show. Those of you who watch, you know I have not been very kind to Omos. But, I think they did this the right way. They didn't do no old typical interference bullshit or a run-in or nothing like that. Brian's beating up two jobbers. Omos has been beating up jobbers. And then almost it's just kind of watching and looking. And then, you know, they have MVP come out and do the talking. Imagine if MVP was with Bobby Lashley and could do the talking for that. was just, oh, God. They dropped the ball on that. Anyway, so he's talking for almost, you know, and saying, look, monsters aren't real, but giants are. So it looks like we're going to get almost and Braun Strowman. That makes sense. You got the two big guys, and like you said before, tired of seeing the big guys just beat up jobbers. Like, how many times are you going to march out two local jobbers and have Brian Please, Strowman? Even or, jobber the name people, the big yeah, names. Yeah, but and just have, have the them destroy. people going against big people. They yeah. even put them against jobs. Stop putting them big, the big dudes. Guy big dudes. The guy. Yeah, man. I'm not impressed by almost beating up two jobbers. I'm just not. I'm not, I'm not impressed by Braun Strowman beating up two dudes that they found at the gas station on the way to the stadium. Like, I don't, that shit, it's cool, yeah, you're going to powerbomb them, ooh, yeah, but fuck out of here. Like, I want to see the two they big dudes. They don't do dudes. Bobby like that, nope. and they don't do Brock like that. Nope. 
and, and I get if it. They, they're, 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 they're trying to smash them over. Their security. Yeah, they're, they're they're trying to smash them over, but they don't have necessarily a storyline for them, so they're just gonna have them just look like monsters that are just. But it does. It's not impressive, and I. And I'm going. I'm a. Listen, if you're gonna get jobbers from these local places. You cannot tell me that there's not some local wrestler that looks like a fucking wrestler. They get these dudes that are built like me and throw them in the ring and expect me to think that this is some local wrestling star that actually stands a chance against. Man, stop. And if you going to do it, at least have the little guy slide out the ring, go run around a Make ring a little believable. bit. Make the big person have to chase him and go after him and catch him. Y'all just let him be like, oh, and then they Make get it tossed. Make it believable. Make it believable. Make it believable. Like they like uh I'm gonna I heard, waste my time making fun. Right, I, I just I hear it all the time. Everybody says the same thing, like the jobbers, they don't even look like like come on man, like we we're, we're not even interested in that. If they if they got some guys that looked physically like they could actually hold their own and then they got killed by Braun Strowman or almost two at a time, that would be halfway decent. It's happened once since we've been watching. Yeah, so once. so I'm glad we finally get the two big guys going head to head. Now I'm not. We ain't saying it's gonna be a great wrestling match because you're not saying it's gonna be great. It's <laughs> not gonna be a great up. wrestling match. <laughs> he can't wrestle. That's fine. It'll be more entertaining. They're sports entertainers, right? It'll be more entertaining than what I've been seeing. Yes, yes, I am. I'm pro sports entertainment, but I also require you to be able to at least wrestle a little bit. I mean, let's think about this. The Rock wasn't the greatest wrestler in the world. Neither was Steve Austin. But they're the two greatest of all time because they could do enough good wrestling to complement the character and the star power that they brought. If I've always said, if almost just had a couple of... He don't have to learn how to be a technical wrestler and grapple and do counters. and you know, yeah, he, I, don't, I don't need him to be AJ Styles. <laughs> right? I just need him to be like Goldberg. Just have a good, solid powerbomb move and something like that and be able to spear somebody and make it look nice. And that's all you got to do. You don't got to do much when you're a big dude. You need two or three good moves. Brock got two moves. The German suplex and the F5. That's literally it. That's literally it. What else do you ever see Brock do? F5 and German suplexes, right? Yeah. Okay. But that's all he got to do. Wardlow. Wardlow's got a clothesline, a spear, and the power bomb sensitivity. And every now and then, he'll do that uh, that uh, jump up her karana off the third rope thing. Which he should not be doing, by the way. Or he'll try to do a... Uh, remember that, that splash he tried to do a couple of weeks ago? And he kind of missed that same time. Yeah. I like it when Warlow does all of that. I like it, so. but just make sure you can hit it. But anyway, that's what I'm saying. Big dudes don't need that much. But almost doesn't even have that much. So, anyway, if he can at least give me that, this might be halfway decent. Might be halfway decent. Okay. Two big guys beating each other up. Maybe they'll break the ring. Maybe somebody will go through the announce table. Who knows? All right, speaking of big dudes and big dudes, Brock Lesnar and Bobby Lashley. Bobby Lashley beat the fuck out of Brock Lesnar on Raw. Let's just call that what that is. He put this man through the announce table. <laughs> How often do you see Brock Lesnar getting put through an announce table? Yeah, so they are definitely pushing Bobby to look like a monster. And I suspect Bobby Lashley is going over. I'm guessing they're doing this at Crown Jewel, Brock and Bobby. Bobby Lashley is going over. He's going to win at Crown Jewel. I think Brock Lesnar is going to put Bobby over, and he's going to be the new you know, Brock Lesnar of the next generation. He, he's going to be the unstoppable, unbeatable monster. 
and they need to keep him strong because somebody down the line is going to have to beat Roman Reigns, and he could be one of the potential people to do it. But between him, maybe still Drew McIntyre, but mm-hmm. no, no, no more Drew. Mm-hmm. Drew, Drew, Drew's time passed. It's so it's gonna have it's gotta be Bobby not, or Cody well, or Bray. Let no, let's not do that. It's not that Drew time has passed. Carrying Cross fucked that up. Yeah, for Drew. You you, you got to do so. Deal with there's Cross no first. more going back. Yeah, to that yeah. in no time soon because yeah. he he did have a uh, he had a great chance. Yeah. Until somebody came in putting a bid they nose and some shit they had no business putting it in when they should have been going after Roman, but that's a different topic for a different day. Yeah, so he, he definitely got to deal with this carry across the now he beat the hell out of him on Raw. Yeah, but in the he need a lot. match. Like But he has to beat him in a match. Like was well, he dead it? Because he came in here fucking shit up for Drew. Yeah, he's fucked Drew up numerous times. I haven't I didn't like that strap match that much. That on, on the Extreme Rules pay per view, that and the Live Ronda match were the two matches that I weren't that hot. They weren't terrible, but I weren't I wasn't that hot on those. So uh, yeah, Drew definitely lost a little bit of momentum with me. So I at this point I'm thinking it's Bray, Cody, and potentially Bobby as a you know further off option. But still, I think it should be Seth Rollins. That's just my opinion. Seth Rollins is my favorite guy outside of Roman. Full disclosure. Ew. The dude, man, give Seth, give Seth Rollins his flowers. He got his flowers, but like, bro, stick to one thing. He talking about people sticking their nose in other people's business. He's sticking his nose in everybody's business. He's opportunistic. He got himself Look, some gold. And that's, that's going to be a problem. You can't keep coming here fucking being in everybody's business because when everybody comes for you, what are little old are you going to do? Nothing. Burn it down. Yeah, they're going to burn you down. All right. Anyway, so let's talk about Sami Zayn and Jay Uso. This storyline is the best thing in professional wrestling, hands down. It's not even close. There is no debate to be had. The bloodline and Sami Zayn dynamic is the thing. Now we know what is coming, but do we really know what's coming? Because everybody's assuming that the bloodline is eventually going to turn on Sami. Right. Mm-hmm. What if that's not the case? They are bashing it over our head that Jay Uso doesn't trust Sammy, doesn't like him, and they're making and they're giving us these tea leaves that Roman is siding with Sammy and Jimmy and Solo are favoring Sammy. And Jay's the odd man out. That's too obvious. I think there's a swerve coming. I don't think they're all going to turn on Sammy. I think at some point, Jimmy, at least Jimmy and Solo, are we're going to get a tag team or we going to get a <laughs> fraction, and Sammy's going to be the leader. How I could about see. That? And I then could they see go Sammy going after Roman. That's I, about I, that. So I that's could that. see Jay Uso turning on Roman Reigns after the way he's been treated, right? And well, and course. potentially costing Roman the title or something like that. And then I could see Sami Zayn saying, "You know what? I'm gonna step up and defend Jay Uso in this." And maybe he'll get on my good side. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I already got Jimmy and Solo. Maybe maybe if I back up Jay, against, uh, uh, you know, maybe that'll... And that could potentially... Like, there's so many ways they could go with this story. The Rock could come in and, and fuck the whole storyline up. We don't know. We don't know what they're doing with that. I still feel like we're getting Rock and Roman at, at WrestleMania. Some way, somehow. I don't know how they get there. I don't know how they do it, but I feel like they're gonna do it. Who knows? Kevin Owens could Kevin Owens could come in, come into play, and come save the day for Sammy. 
it can go so many different ways. That's why it's such a good storyline because it's like <clears throat> you kind of see where it's going, but then you don't really know how it's going to end and who's going to turn, who's going to go left, who's going to go right. Are they going to turn on Sammy or is Sammy going to turn on them? Is Kevin Owens going to get a shot at Roman Reigns title like he asked for? And then is Sammy going to, you know, remember who his best friend from years and years and years in the past is and side with KO? I mean, who we don't who knows? KO and Sammy could be the ones to dethrone the Usos. We don't know. So many different ways. So shit's great. <clears throat> All right. So anyway, we shall see. SmackDown comes on tonight again, like I said. So we are going to further these storylines. We're going to get brave. We're going to get, you know, the bloodline. We're going to get some more clarity on this stuff and see where we're going as we get towards Crown Jewel. Now, before I get out of here, uh, we had Tuesday, the Tuesday Night War, the mini war, NXT versus AEW War. Ooh. I saw the ratings come out. AEW did 720,000 something. NXT did 680,000 something. So it wasn't a very big gap, but NXT, but AEW did win in the ratings. Kind of. They took a big drop from what their normal ratings are. Because they're usually closer to a million. That may be true, but too because it was on a different on a day, Tuesday. so that so that, that that's expected. Some people may be off on Wednesdays to watch it, right. and they not off on Tuesdays. So the drop is expected, but if we're talking head to head with the WWE's developmental brand, that's a real close gap. Because theoretically, people who normally would watch NXT on Tuesday would say, oh, AEW's on. I'll watch that instead. But not necessarily. And NXT's ratings didn't drop because of... This is the thing. NXT's ratings didn't drop because AEW was on. Okay, they but they right also they should they not are. have been higher with all of the WWE <laughs> that, main that, stage that stars on it. That helped. But it's still NXT. That's fine. I'm just saying, if you got it, they had it laid out with all the main stage stars. So for me, why y'all ain't hit eight hundred thousand? <sighs> it's NXT. They're not it gonna get matter. that. On, you it, got, they're, they're not gonna got, get that on Tuesday. What the hell? Why is the AEW supposed to get it? That, on Tuesday I know. That's what I'm AEW saying. Wednesday. That 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 drop was expected, but you we also would expect a drop for NXT as well with another wrestling show. Their primary wrestling show with two world championship matches on it should have made more of an impact. That's all I'm saying. But I hear people say, oh, AEW won the Tuesday Night War, right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, but if you look at that numbers, they did. The numbers, yeah, they did. Give them they props. Y'all always trying to diss AEW. Give them they props this go around. It won't hurt y'all this one time. Um, don't tell me that your primary it won't show. won't hurt y'all this one time. Two world championship say. matches is competing with NXT. Okay. It's hurting y'all really bad to say that. Uh-huh. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Either way, they both were good. Like I said, that hangman situation, we shall see what comes from that. Hopefully, he is good. Like I stated earlier, I'm a hangman fan. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully, they book him better in the future. But, man, we we, we, we got to we gotta keep guys healthy. We got to protect the wrestlers. All right? They are people. They are not just entertainers. They are people. They are fathers, husbands, brothers, nephews, next-door neighbors, all of that. So, we got to protect these people. All right? Christian K. Fave, thank y'all for watching. You stop saying a couple of words.